Welcome to part one of refurbishing a vintage model steamboat. This is the inspection and looking ahead. This old steamboat has stood idle for many years and it's sustained some damage. But the basic structure is very interesting. It's completely made out of steel, steel plates soldered together. It's quite something and it must have taken a lot of hours to solder these individually shaped steel plates using soft solder over a wooden former. The original steam engine fitted was a non-reversing Stuart Double Ten. I'm going to fit a reversing version of a Stuart Double Ten. The first and most important thing I'm going to do is fit a new boiler. This one was built by Chris Lyle of SBM Boilers and his contact details are on screen at the moment. Very nicely made. This will replace the original old boiler that was in the boat. This one is about 4 inches longer so will have a greater steaming capacity too and it comes with a hydraulic test certificate. On a job like this I would always replace the boiler, it's just not worth the risk of messing about with a boiler that could be 50 or 60 years old. This boiler is 3.5 inches in diameter and one minor problem I had was the flue tube was slightly too long because I need to put a superheater in the end of the flue tube. This was a very simple job and just involved trimming a bit off the end of the flue tube and making a brass insert. Taking a quick look at the back head fittings, on the left is the water gauge, on the right is the clack valve and in the centre will be the pressure gauge siphon. But not the one that I'm showing here, this is just to illustrate what you would normally fit. I'm going to fit a thing like this, this is a piece of old scrap copper tubing. I'm going to make a much better version of it. This will support the pressure gauge and allow it to face upwards so you'll be able to see what the current pressure in the boiler is by just having a look through the top hatch of the boat. There are a pair of threaded bushes at the front end of the boiler, one each side, but I'm blanking these off because I don't need them at all, they're just surplus. But they could come in useful at a future time if anyone wanted to fit a live steam pump to feed water into the boiler. I'm using a very belt and braces approach for fitting these blanking plugs. I'm using a copper washer and I'm also using some thread sealant, the usual 542 from Loctite. You will notice by the video that I'm not over tightening these blanking plugs, nipping them up just tight enough. With the Loctite and the copper washer they're certainly not going to leak. Here's the other one. All the bushes on the boiler are made from phosphor bronze which is the material they should be made from. The blanking plugs on the other hand are made from brass, so if I did over tighten them they'd probably shear off which is never a good idea. What I'm about to do now is mark out the front of the flue tube to drill and tap to take a couple of bolts to hold the brass plug in place. This is only the first episode of the series so I shouldn't be showing this really. I'm just marking out and then I've drilled and I'm now tapping the hole to take a small bolt to retain the plug in the front of the flue tube. Here's one I prepared earlier. Over now to the details of the power plant. This is the original double ten I removed from the bolt. This is what I'm going to replace it with. Regular viewers to my channel may recognise this engine. This is one of the late Bernard Walker's engines. Bernard Walker was a friend of mine and a superb engineer. And the reversing gear I'm going to adapt for radio control. It's a great combination really. A superbly made model boat engine for an equally superbly built model boat. This part is the original chimney extension from the boat. All I had to do with it is remachine the brass part so it fits perfectly into the flue of the new boiler. Once everything's in place I will make a special pipe that connects the exhaust of the engine to the pipe up the chimney. Everything in this model boat is going to be quite a tight fit so I'm going to find a suitable place for the displacement lubricator to make it an easier job to empty and refill it. The good thing is there's plenty of room around the front of the boiler for the burner, that needs a lot of air but in the engine compartment you can see how close it is to the boiler itself. I'm going to gas fire this boat, more details about that to follow. As you can see from this video it's pretty tight in the area of the engine, particularly the connection to the propeller shaft, this is no good at all. In fact it's not really a propeller shaft, it just comes in from the outside and you fasten it to the engine. This would leak badly, I'm going to put a proper shaft tube in. More about that later, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.